Trump peeing on girls, I guess. Um, despite Trump denying it last week, the British spy is still very confident that there is a P tape out there with Donald Trump. Okay, uh, the former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele. I'm gonna try to get through this. Okay, uh, sat down with George Stephanopoulos to discuss uh, the controversial findings of his dossier. This was back in 2017, and we are still talking about it today. Listen, here's the thing. I don't know if we will ever find the P tape, but do you really put it past Trump to pee on somebody? Really? No. I mean. It probably exists, right? If the tape isn't there, he likely still did it though. Here's some of that interview. And today, do you still believe that that tape exists? I think it probably does, but I wouldn't put 100% certainty on it. So how do you explain if that tape does indeed exist, it hasn't been released? Well, it hasn't needed to be released. Why not? Because I think the Russians felt they'd got pretty good value out of Donald Trump when he was president of the US. All right, Michael, what are your thoughts here? Uh, you know, I, I don't really know where to go. Look, I, I, he uh, peed all over the Constitution, which is a lot more <laughs> right. important than what he did in his private life here. I don't, I, and I, the other part of it is, as much as we do know about Donald Trump, it seems like it should be enough. And uh, it, whether or not it was, I mean, I'd say that it was because he lost the election in 2020. And that seems to be the result of, I would say, a compendium of these things being brought out, and this is among them. But I don't think it's going to change anything, whether it's released or not. Yeah, and that's the thing about the era we're living in. P tape or no P tape, it will not change his following. His following will make an excuse for it. His following will say, well, that was before he was anointed to be our Messiah. Whatever they want to say about him, okay? They will continue to follow him and make excuse. What we've seen year after year, Michael, we have seen, especially the Christian evangelicals, they have literally transformed their religion in order to fit Donald J. Trump inside of it. Donald Trump went on record and said he has never asked for forgiveness, right? Well, that's that's a hallmark of the Christian faith. Oh well, maybe he need, he never needed to. Maybe he never did anything wrong. I, you know, you only ask for forgiveness if you've sinned. Maybe he's never sinned. Well, that would make him your Messiah, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Christian Evangelical. That's what that would make him. But that's the way he has been able to operate in this current political space. And and, and they got if I if I have time for a second here, they got uh, what they wanted. They were able to yeah. use him as a vessel of sorts to get their three Supreme Court justices. If they bite their tongue, they're very good at it, bite their tongue, vote for this man. They know what's coming back to them for that vote. So I would say as a special interest, they know exactly what they're doing, the Christian evangelicals. And in the case of Donald Trump, it worked very well for them. Yeah, and that's why you have to stop voting personality and vote for the agenda. The agenda is what you're actually trading in. When you send a politician to Washington, you are sending a person who is supposed to trade in for a policy. And that policy should be a policy that creates progress for the community that you love. That's how it works, it's a very transactional game. We want it to be transformational, we would love it to be transformative, but it is not. That's not the game. Now, if you come across some people that are transformative, like AOC and Bernie Sanders and others, great. They are the minority, all right? 